Oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel like you're always I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. oh. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Two Step Violin. Today we have a very special and different episode. Many of you probably have seen these videos where they get a group of people from a certain field or expertise and they will see if they all felt the same way on certain topics. So what we decided to do is to do a classical music version of that. We invited four of our good friends, they're all professional musicians, and we wanted to get together to find out, do we all think the same way regarding Ooh. certain topics? Controversy. My name is Emma DeMarco. I am a saxophonist and a woodwind specialist. I play classical saxophone, not jazz, and I also do a lot of contemporary music, so yeah, I do some really, really weird noises on the saxophone. Hey, my name is Tiana Kozacic. I'm a professional harpist. I'm currently a freelancer, a teacher, and I'm a harp ensemble leader for the Harp Society of Queensland. Hey guys, I'm Alex Ranieri. I'm a freelance classical piano player. I am the artistic director of the Brisbane Music Festival. I'm particularly passionate about working with composers and collaborating on new works. Hi guys, my name is Phoebe Russell. I'm a professional double bass player. I play in the Queensland Symphony Orchestra. I enjoy teaching and I'm particularly passionate about playing as a soloist and playing repertoire that's not usually played on a double bass. Hi, my name is Eddie. I'm a violinist. I've been playing for 20 years. I used to play in an orchestra and now I just make videos. Hi, my name is Brett. I play violin and I used to play professionally. I don't know what happened. I enjoy pop music. Three, two, yeah. one. Oh, I'm going so basic. Oh, we have one, we have one. <laughs> I got you. I wow. didn't expect that. Yeah. I'm a sucker for Taylor Swift, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I like it, it's catchy. Dude, that was good. Yeah. Huh? That was so good. Huh? <laughs> I was expecting at least one person to be like, nah, it's shallow. Yeah. I think we're just really cool, down to earth, open minded people, you know? Yeah. yeah. Maybe people don't have this like idea of classical music. And actually, reality is most of us just enjoy music in general, anything. Classical music is just one form of it. That is very yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I see you're saving my mind. Saving myself. Brett, the question is what pop music do you listen to? BTS. <laughs> <laughs> That's the safest answer. <laughs> Music competitions are a good thing. Three, two, one. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. I love it. Here we go. I think it's good to an extent. Uh, for people like me, it makes me practice. What if you get motivated to practice and then come first place? Now you don't get motivated in the future. But I don't think that's the actual point of competitions. In music, you, you're not first because you beat everyone else. You're first because you did it really, really, really well. Like you're competing against this absolute. But do you think that it is absolute though? Because I feel like in reality, most music competitions, it's quite biased. I see young kids that, you know, some of them it is a good thing, you know, they get that kind of, I want to practice harder because I want to get first. But for a lot of them, they work their little butts off and then they go to the competition and they feel like they're not enough because they didn't place. And I don't know if that's the right message to send to younger musicians. Well, it's playing the game and I think when you enter a competition, you are entering a game. It's you know, the Olympics for instrumental playing and I think the psychological impacts of that aspect of being competitive can be deep, deeply problematic. but. As we've all been saying, it can have positive impacts if you're really clear about why you're there. My family is slash was supportive of my career choice. Three, two, <laughs> one. Oh! Wow! I see that. I see that. I see that pattern. I see that. An Asian, <laughs> Asian situation right now. Definitely my immediate family were on board, but my big extended Italian family who are all lawyers and like high powered business people still are like, are you doing the music? I'm, I'm just neutral yeah. because I don't actually know what they think. 
<laughs> in case your mom was like watching. In case you're watching. <laughs> I know at the beginning, my mom wanted me to become a doctor. But I think being like continuing practicing, it's like this conflict. She wants to let the kid do their, what they want, chase their dreams, so to speak. Hoping they'll be a doctor, but my brother has filled that void. Yeah, but see, you had a younger brother to fill in the void. Yeah. My older sister already became a musician. <laughs> <laughs> I was meant to be in the backup plan. <laughs> I want to be a musician too. My dad was actually very supportive, um, but my mom initially was very concerned. She came from a background where economic reality was a genuine concern, and she wanted the best for me, I guess. Alex is off the charts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's way off the charts. Yeah. My family are awesome. I'm really, really lucky to have had. Um, I mean, not easy, but a very um, smooth journey with my music. It probably is quite tough from a parent's perspective, if they're not musicians, to even have a concept of what that means. It's annoying because I'm in the front, I can't see what people are doing. Yeah. <laughs> We're just trying to <laughs> <really surprising you. laughs> Getting paid by exposure is worth it and a legitimate form of payment. For professionals. <laughs> people that, I guess, see themselves as musicians, though. I read this thing once and it was like, why are you paying like $100 an hour for a string quarter at a wedding or whatever the rate was, it's like, why are you paying that big amount? And it's like, because you're not paying for that hour at a wedding, you're paying for the 10 years of study that they did mm. and the rehearsals that they did leading up to that and everything else. We spend years and years training. I think most of us probably started as young kids. Most of us probably practice several hours a day all the way through high school. We can't expect to be taken seriously and we can't expect for people to understand why music is so important and share our music with everyone if we don't value ourselves enough to ask for proper payment. The reason why I was like very hesitant on moving right, because I like you said early stages, which so I was thinking of most situations. When they're young, they can just do it just for fun and just start getting people to know them within the community. But I also agree with all those points. That's why I wanted to move back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess playing for free as you know, university students, it kind of comes more to networking. You will do one or two free things while you're a student. It's kind of like a gateway. Like now, I pretty much refuse all unpaid gigs unless it's really something that I know that I want to do. As musicians, we need to learn when to say no. And also learn when the odd situations are that the exposure is worth it. I feel like it's a tool and it's up to us yeah. to make a uh, mm -hmm. During our first tour, oh. there was an agent that approached us. Oh. And he tried to sell us on this whole idea that he would manage a tour, but we would get like basically nothing from it. You guys are artists anyway, you do it for the art. If you wanted money, you wouldn't be doing music anyway, right? Yeah, that, that I'm was... I'm so sick of that. Yeah. 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 I'm like, look, I want to eat too. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I get nervous performing on stage. Agree or disagree? Three, two, one. Whoa! I I want to hear from Alex. Yeah, Alex, <laughs> Alex, how do you do it? Teach me. Well, yeah, I, I'm in the middle, so I do get nervous sometimes, but it's very based on context for me. Like if I'm on my own on stage, you're the one person in control of the entire product. I don't know. I, get, I definitely get nervous sometimes. But I feel like I've been playing the piano a long time. I think I can do it. Like, yeah, it's fine. When I'm a bass player, so when a solo happens, it's very rare. And yeah. there's often like a very long build-up for a two-bar solo or something. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> As a kid, I was fine, and then it started growing, and growing, and then I went to university, and in the final year of my bachelor degree. It just like hit and I had this concerto opportunity with the Conservatory Wind Orchestra and thankfully I was wearing a long dress because I walked out on stage and my knees were like going like this. Mm. Like not even kidding and it just hit me. When you're getting shaky but and your regard is like becoming ricochet, it's <laughs> <laughs> so not just like I'm nervous, it's like Oh crap, everyone knows yeah. I'm nervous, yeah. how embarrassing. Yeah. Mm. And that always got to me psychologically. We got really bad in uni actually. Every <laughs> music student playing the same repertoire. I just remember I was like shaking the entire second movement. Was, like, I was playing for you. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> 
I feel like there's a trigger, like for me, that area backstage where you're just looking through the window and you can see the piece before happening and you're about to play a concerto. Mm -hmm. Even though I love playing, yeah. <laughs> I'm like sitting like so nervous. Hopefully people watching this day should feel better about knowing that everyone does get nervous. Except that. Yeah, yeah, except that. Yeah. Yeah. I have found deeper relationships through music than anywhere else. Three, two, one. For me, it's obvious. I would have met Brett if it wasn't through. Yeah. yeah. Mass tutoring. What is mass tutoring? Mass tutoring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there are some people in my life that I am close with because of music, but I don't think it was necessarily music that made it the thing that yeah. I bonded with them. I was undecided about music for a long time, so mm -hmm. I went to like a natural sciences grammar school. So I have a lot of friends from there, like mm -hmm. some best friends, and I never found that it was like. A divide between us, like with the grammar school friends, that oh, they didn't get music or they didn't. It's just something you work hard on. All right, we can all love each other. <laughs> the government should fund the arts more. Three, two, one. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> I need some special support here. Help! Help! I lived in Germany for six years, and there there's so much money being given to the arts. They even have they have some of the highest caliber of performance art in the world. Mm -hmm. In every way, like, I thought it worked really well, so... <laughs> <laughs> As a musician, I want to go to that side so bad. My answer on neutral is not so much I don't agree. I think it's more like I don't feel like I'm in the position to understand how the economy works and how a nation should best allocate its resources. But I agree as a musician, and for the sake of the art, it makes absolute sense to be on this side. Yeah. yeah I'm only here because I've been in it and what it's done for me. Yeah. I had the opportunity, mm -hmm. I think it could help others. I'm not sure that it would be the miraculous change that I guess a lot of musicians that I hear say we need more money are expecting would happen. For me, the issue actually relates to our previous conversation about competitions in that in Australia, finding particularly project based funding is a competition, which is a bit of a sad way to look at it, but like we all have so much to share and it's, you know, the shame is that there's not an environment economically where we can all be supported to do everything that we want to do in the scale that we want to do it. I keep going back to my home country, so we have a free music school for kids. I went, as I said, to a music high school, which is again completely free. And here it's kind of left more to the parents. Even if they recognize the importance of it, what if they're not in a position to pay it? Well, the arts should be supported yeah. mm -hmm. by the government. And like, enable someone, you know, you can choose whether you want to or don't want to play an instrument, but have that choice. We should perform less of the classics, Beethoven, Mozart, and give more opportunity for contemporary classical composers. Three, two, one. I, I, I'll just say shut up. I mean, shut up because I have no opinion on it. Mm. Yeah, so, I don't know enough about contemporary. So I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. <laughs> For me, it's it's twofold. The first is I'm a saxophone player. Like my instrument wasn't invented when Bach was composing, so there is no <laughs> Bach <laughs> for saxophone. You know. Not all new music is doing amazing things, but a lot of it is. Mm -hmm. And you don't find the gems until you sift through all the, the crazy concerts and, mm -hmm. and do the wild things and experiment. And if we don't stop experimenting, I'll be still artists. I play piano, so I have the opposite problem. Like, I have all of the music. But for was it for forte piano or but, for harpsichord? Shush. <laughs> <laughs> I love playing the canon of classical music. I think it's amazing it has gone through. It was talked about the sifting process. Yeah. We only have good music that is old. There was a lot more at the time yeah. that other people did the sifting process. You will play a majority of classical contemporary music that is not as awesome as the Beethoven Symphony that you've played it next mm. to. My last question. So, music has helped and enriched other areas of my life. Three, two, one, go. Sometimes 
socially. So when you kind of like are engaging with people who are not musicians, it can feel like a super eye roll to talk about what you do, when actually that should be really easy for us. Learning a craft, not necessarily music, but dedicating so much of your life in a skill, teaches a person so much and builds character. I see people that haven't done that when they were young or didn't have the opportunity. These people tend to find it hard to stick through to a long project. I mean, I'm speaking very much in generalities, of course, and you don't have to get that through music, but it is a benefit I have yeah. um, experienced with music. Mm. Is that it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is entirely. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. right. I don't know, man. I'm so square. I love that my whole life is music. You know, yeah. like, I've thought about getting hobbies. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, it's, that's my hobby. That's my entire life. That's, I'm married to a musician. I'm surrounded by musicians. I work in music. Like, I think music in a lot of ways creates this beautiful little bubble mm -hmm. for us and these beautiful opportunities and long-term friendships and, and think like there's so many benefits. But yeah, as you started to talk about that isolating effect, it made me think like, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> there's friendships that like from school that I haven't been able to maintain very well because our lives have drifted apart because I got into that music bubble. When does it become kind of suffocating? Yeah, like yeah. the only thing that you're doing. As I said, so I was torn between music and like a whole bunch of other things for a long, long time. But you need to actually sit down, learn it completely by heart, and like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. do it perfectly. Yeah. At times, I felt that music was more limiting than enriching. Yeah. So I didn't actually probably, when I was younger, devote enough time to it. I'll never forget when I was in my QS tour. I was 15, and my host day person was a violinist in the orchestra. I don't know how legit the advice was pertaining to that thing, but it always stuck to me because I thought it was interesting. You know, she said, technically you, you're great, you can play the notes, you just need to live life more because you need to mature, experience life, and how do you express through music if you don't know what to express? Yeah. yeah. And I thought it was interesting because if you're only locked up in a practice room, what are you really sharing? I really struggle with the idea of having to mature as a person in order to bring interpretational dimensions to your playing. I mean, well, what I it means then is that you're always at work, regardless of whether you're playing your instrument or not, and you're the kind of person that thrives and always been hardworking and like never stop. Which I think I sometimes that works for me, and other times I really have to commit to you know, R and R in a way that I think a lot of people don't. Yeah, what's the rest of Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, I just don't know the term. I know what relaxing means. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, we have to thank you all the musicians here. Uh, these are friends that we met while we study music, so it's great to have all these perspectives. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want more. Comment below. And we'll see you guys next time. Go practice!